inside of me. 20 degrees, as cold as this, I'm out of my mind. There's nowhere to hide, disintegrate all thoughts of you. Look like a fool when I spy and ruin my life. Where my demise, but I can't find. find the right all right, what is up, YouTube? Back at you with more junk. I'm the Audi guy, and this time, we're talking about my D4. As most of you know, I have a 2005 D3 A8 and also this 2014 D4 A8L TDI. Um, and the reasoning for this video, one year mark of ownership. May 6th of last year, 2021, I purchased the car with 39,000 miles on it, and it now has 60,595. So I've put about 20,000 miles on this vehicle. Yes, I have pushed her a little bit, but she's been wonderful. And I used to work very far away, so I 5,000 miles was from that, and I just recently went to Florida, and I drove there, so I've put about another 3,000 miles on it since then. I have done a service on the car before I went to Florida, knowing that when I'd come back, I will have put the amount of miles on it that it would acquire to do another service, and now we're at that point. So, one year ownership of an Audi A8L D4 generation. I happen to have a TDI. Let's talk about it. I know most of these things will still correspond by the regular D4. All the insides pretty much have the same features. They really all have the same electronics. The only thing that makes my car different from the rest of them, even a 4OT, which is still a very special car, as well as an S8, a special car. The 3OT is pretty common. The TDI is not as common and that's what makes this car a little bit more special even in my eyes than a 4OT and don't ridicule me I literally owned a D4 4OT it was the best car I've ever had it was the fastest car I've ever had uh, it was a wonderful experience I just happened to get robbed and for legal standpoint I unfortunately cannot talk about it what happened to my 4OT D4, you can send me a message if you're interested in knowing about that. TDI D4. Um, honestly, it's been really wonderful. It's been a very nice experience, a very comfortable ride. It's bargain price on air suspension, other than a Rolls Royce, maybe a Bentley. There's not, I mean, you could get a big SUV, like an SQ8 or an X7 on air, and I, I would assume it would ride pretty nice, but I like sedans. I know a lot of people's parents are more SUV people. Early on in the ownership, we had driven out to New Jersey to buy a, an A6 TDI for my friend. And I had gotten diesel down there, which I thought was good at the time at Wawa. I know most of you know Wawa. We're actually in the Northern coast, uh, but I've traveled South a lot. And I know a lot of you Southern people have Wawa's. If you have a TDI, I would recommend not getting diesel there because it threw me a check engine light. I went to Audi and they told me the cause of it was bad diesel. And they asked me a whole bunch of questions. They asked me like where I'd been, where, where I got diesel for the car, like what I was doing. And I told them it, it was plain and simple. We were heading back. I stopped at Wawa to get diesel. And on my way back, it threw an engine light. And so what happened on startup, the car was idling kind of rough kind of felt like a 4ot with bad turbos not gonna lie the glow plug light would flash and it definitely had reduced power so it was in some kind of limp mode they uh reflashed the the fuel rail and i don't know if they drained the diesel in the tank or not but they got it figured out for free no charge perks of having a tdi no charge, they pushed me in front of everybody and got me out first. That was the only time in my whole one year ownership I ever had a check engine light problem. But I had my windshield crack. I had my windshield tinted, it was 50%, and uh, rock off a truck on the highway, cracked it. I let it sit over time, I said I'll replace it when it goes all the way through. Unfortunately, this was in the middle of winter, so one day we had a big snowstorm and i believe that the weight of the snow actually cracked the glass more and i woke up one day and it was cracked from top to bottom so i had to go get it replaced so i did a little bit of research and i found that audi glass isn't good nor should you use it and 
I had originally thought that somebody had replaced the windshield and did a poor job. I actually now know from a little bit of research and some people have told me this and specifically a 2014 model this will happen to I guess they fixed it in 2015 but the 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 weather stripping or the adhesive that they use around the windshield is very poor and not up to par from the factory so it will actually leak and lose seal on a factory car for no reason at all that'll just happen and then you'll get water inside the car you'll get wind noise on the highway I had my windshield glass replaced with a company called Pilkington and I heard it's very reputable it's actually funny the a6 that we went and got has Pilkington glass in it so we know for a fact that that windshield has been replaced before and now my car has it too the easy cool it's not tinted as of right now but it still has some kind of UV ray protection in it so it's a little darker than even just like a Mazda protege but you can still kind of see through it so I am going to get it tinted Peter Boston area so I had Sean at Titan Auto Glass his site is in Woburn the 3 liter V6 turbo diesel very strong and it's got plenty of pull even factory as it sits 426 foot pounds of torque 250 horsepower Oh, and the booze kicks in. Oh. But I will say the engine has been wonderful. It hasn't given me a single hiccup other than that check engine light thing that we mentioned. One thing I do know about the DPF sensor, somewhere there's two of them in the cats. And I've read in the A8 forums that at least in Europe, they will get hot and melt and then spray uh, add blue everywhere. Knock on wood, that hasn't happened to us yet. There is also the water pump at a higher mileage, basically just like a 3OT will go as well. I haven't had any issues with that yet. Like I said, we're at 60,000 miles, 20,000 miles since I bought the car with 30,000, 39,000 miles on it. I've seen this in an A7 3O TDI where there's a coolant sensor or flange that'll go bad in a really tricky, area of the engine and it'll spray fluid everywhere too luckily that hasn't happened to us i actually haven't heard about that happening in an a8 3 tdi even though it, it i've seen it happen in an a7 maintenance cost Twenty thousand miles later we're gonna need some brakes and we're gonna need some tires i was thinking about buying some cheapo tires for now but i think i'm gonna suck it up and get some michelins or continental dws 06 plus I think that's a really fantastic tire. It is a 265.40 on a 20 inch wheel. My 4OT came on 19s, which did not look as nice. We all really know how much tires cost. I, I can bet it'll cost anywhere from, you know, eight to $1,300 for a nice set of tires. Well, luckily now I do work at a tire company, so I'll have my friend mount those for me. Rear brakes, I believe on my friend's A6 with uh, electronic parking brake, I believe that was $500 read somewhere in an a8 forum that front brakes cost anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars just for the front obviously that's with labor so i'm going to guess it's going to be two thousand dollars or maybe a little less uh, pads and rotors done on this car we'll call that two thousand dollars just to be safe and maybe less and we'll call it a thousand eleven hundred dollars give or take for the tires so right there we're in three thousand dollars of maintenance give or take and i will say my driver's assistance radar control module in the front right which is the passenger side radar module j428 is bad i've had this confirmed my cruise control doesn't work and i've had audi diagnose it now the cost of having one of those replaced is four thousand dollars if i want to go ahead and get all of this stuff done seven or eight thousand dollars tires and brakes are just a service that's nothing too crazy the bulk of that price the sensor itself is thirty six hundred dollars imagine if you get in a front end collision but they don't total out the car you're going to be paying like seven or eight thousand dollars alone just for those two front sensors this is one of those things that you can't get away with cheaping out yes maybe you could buy a used module 
but you still have to pay the $600 coating fee, whether it's new or used. And then you run into the problem of how long is that used sensor gonna last and is it even good to begin with? So now you have that in the back of your mind and it's coughing up a little, a little more to have a brand new part and peace of mind. Is it worth it saving a couple extra and having to go through that whole process again? And I went through that process with the windshield. It was $600 to have the windshield calibrated and you have to get a four wheel alignment before they calibrate the windshield. Ridiculous. This, this folding screen right here did not fold when I bought the car. Other than that, everything else in this car works and works as it should and you can get away with not replacing the screen. You can just replace the metal mechanism behind it. If you're going to do all that, you might as well go ahead and do all the Apple CarPlay coding. Have a movie play while you're driving. As most of you D4 owners should know, other than that, I've, I've gotten a few scratches in a parking lot, which is really annoying. I do need to have the whole car paint corrected and ceramic coated. Honestly, I would like to have a clear wrap installed, but I was thinking about doing the same color KPMF wrap, that satin white pink pearl. I think it would be wild to have two cars of the same exact color. Um, we already do have two cars of the same exact color. Unfortunately, we don't have much to talk about here. This car really has been quite nice to drive. A few of the German hiccups, small, minuscule things, cost a lot of money, and that's just the German way. An Audi, BMW, Mercedes, doesn't matter. Honestly, BMWs are a little cheap for some reason. You know, you gotta pay some ridiculous prices for some things, and I'm sure most of you are well aware of that. One year into ownership with this D4, AL TDI V6, it's been really easy. It's been really nice. I bought the car with 39,000 miles and it now has 60,000. I know I mentioned I used to drive far for work. I wouldn't have had this car if it wasn't for that job. There's a sacrifice. Down to Florida in this car recently, last week. Um, and that was another 3,000 miles. I stopped in North Carolina.